71 in the area. And number 90, Ethan Estrella.
Well, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the campus of Antelope Valley College, home of the Antelope Valley College Marauders. It's football Saturday once again, and we're here in week number eight of the 3C2A season. Well, everybody, we got a good game coming up, and getting we're getting started here. Santa Barbara College up here visiting here in Antelope Valley. Santa Barbara comes with a 6-1 and one record, doing a lot of work all across Southern California, as well as doing their best to try and get a bid for the playoffs. On the other hand, Antelope Valley have been doing a lot of good work as of late. The record is 4-3, and three, but don't let that distract you. They have been playing incredibly well for most of this, uh, the second half of the season, and they are currently 2-0 and oh in conference, as well as two, Santa Barbara City College being 2-0 and oh in conference. This is a first major conference game for both of these teams. They're going to be challenging each other quite a bit. So the stage is set. We are getting ready to rock and roll here at Marauder Stadium. And it is a happy sophomore day as well. Just going over a couple of the small things. We have 24 sophomores here at Marauders that won't be returning next season. They have played their final season here for the Marauders and they'll be going on to other places. And on screen you see your Marauders taking the field as we get ready for kickoff. Once again, it's the Santa Barbara City College Vaqueros visiting here in Antelope Valley College, the Marauders. And we'll see you in a couple minutes, everybody. Okay, a couple things. Uh, work with your teammates, keep your shoulder pads covered up, back pads covered up. We'll help you guys with that. We'll remind you anyway. Yeah. Second thing is sportsmanship. Take care of sportsmanship here inside of the ball. Okay? Guys on your side get a little hot, a little frustrated. Get them away so we don't have to take care of them. Got it? Okay. You're visiting today, you're going to call the toss. That's the head side, that says tail, so that's the tail side. Yeah. Okay? What would you like? Tail. Call his tails. Here we go. Tails is the call. That's tails. You like it? They're going to defer. Okay, hang on right there. Santa Barbara's going to toss. Who's going to have the legs of Okay, so we're going to see the Antelope Valley College does not win the coin toss. Santa Barbara wins, and they have deferred to take the football in the second half. We are moments away from kickoff in just a national anthem away. We'll see you guys right after national anthem.
National Anthem is over and we are ready for kickoff here in Southern California at Marauder Stadium. Hope everybody is having a good day. It is beautiful weather here in Antelope Valley. Slight breeze moving across the field. It'll coming towards the press box, if you will, from our perspective here down on the field. And we are just about ready to get underway. As Santa Barbara City College gets ready to kick off, back to return here for Antelope Valley, obviously. We have Robinson Reese, Q Allen, Cameron Carlisle, kind of all in the mix there. Back is Cameron Carlisle here on the near side, and it looks like it's going to be coming to Carlisle. Carlisle backs up towards his end zone along the near sideline, cuts back inside, trying to find some room to run, and he gets over the 15, and we have a flag come out around the 23 or 22 yard line. So we will see how the referees choose to sort that out. And we will see the offense come out onto the field for the first time of the day for the Marauders after the referees sort out the laundry. Santa Barbara City College not allowing many points over the course of this season. Like we said in the pregame, this will be the first major test for them of the season as Antelope Valley kind of used to scoring points now. So the penalty will be half the distance to the goal line and will be assessed all the way down to the eight-yard line. Darius Warren leading his offense out on the field. He's been the starter since roughly around week four. He's been consistent as the starter. And standing next to him, Amir Bankhead. He's been the force of this offense on the ground. Two receivers to his left, one to his right. Handles the shotgun snap, immediately hands it off to Bankhead. Bankhead up the middle for a medium gain. Looks like he's got three yards all the way up to the 11. Second and seven now coming up. Out of the gun again. Two receivers to his left, one in motion. Warren fakes the handoff to the man in motion, and here comes Bankhead up the middle again. Maybe he has two yards this time. So third and short coming up. Third and four will call it up to the night. Check that 14-yard line. Line to gain will be the 18. And the Marauders forced to make their first third down play of the game. We'll see what they have dialed up. This will be the first set where they have four receivers out. There hasn't really been much pressure because of the two running plays so far. Warren, quick fire pass over the middle. Great catch and reception. And Sh Shamir Washington with a large first down and then some all the way up to the 35-yard line. What a great job of a quick pass and throw. And the Santa Barbara defense on their heels immediately here in the first quarter as AVC converts their first third down. From the 35, Darius Warren out of the gun. Hands it off to Bankhead. Bankhead immediately up the middle. He's going to be hit behind the line of scrimmage and drop for a, a loss of one back down to the 34. Grant Hessler, big number 94 right there in the middle of the defensive line was the man leading the charge there. So Bankhead's going to have to figure – something out or the offensive line may have to figure some things out in terms of opening up holes and trying to make Bankhead's job easier. Easier said than done. Throwing here on second down, overthrown, intended for Robert James. There came the pressure for the first time. That was Amir Brown, number 32, coming in on the Blitz there 
It'll be interesting to see how the defense continues to adapt. And we have the third and long coming up. Second, third down chance here for Santa Barbara to get the offense of the Marauders off the field. Two receivers to the left, split backs for Warren. Warren out of the gun, puts a man in motion. Bankhead was in motion. He throws it and lofts it over to the side, and it's going to be out of bounds. Trying to toe drag, but not with enough in bounds was Robert James. As he did make the catch, but incomplete. And we'll see fourth down coming up here for the Marauders, and the punting unit will come out. First drive yielded one first down here, but no points on the board. Santa Barbara will get the football. Not particularly an amazing territory. The bunting game from the Marauders has been very good. John Henderson doing a great job this year. He has a long of 73. Takes the snap, gets it off quickly. He had a little bit of pressure in his face, and it's a low snap or low kick. Going to be handled well and returned up to about the 41-yard line. So this, the Vaqueros will start with pretty decent starting position here. So both teams 2-0 two and, two and oh in conference coming into this game. And most of that work has been done by Alex Johnson for Santa Barbara under the helm. He's had quite a few snaps as quarterback. They, they do have two quarterbacks on the list. There's Trent Lura, their running back, also number two, Brendan Smith. Hands it off here on first down and with a nice gain. That was... McKee, Norfleet, almost with a first down, a gain of nine on first down. So second and one coming up. Out of the huddle with three receivers out. Heavy offensive line to the right side. Two to his right, one to his left. Johnson changing around personnel. He has his tight end move over. That was Ellie and Sundquist, and there's going to be whistles. And the referees are having a conversation down on the field. While the referees are having a conversation, we'll talk about a little bit of what's going on here. You're watching ABC College Football on SoCal College Sports, found on SoCal College Sports 1 on YouTube, and out on our website. You can watch all of these games archived, and they'll be there forever as long as YouTube is there. We can't really control if YouTube disappears, but our games will be there. Johnson, out of the gun, has his running back to his left. Referees decide that there's no... Penalties at all. Running towards the right side and has a gap in a first down. It's going to be Norfleet. And he's all the way down to the Marauders 40. So one first down. And the offense is moving. on the it, Through the air, Johnson has 559 yards but only three touchdowns. Trenton Lura, six touchdowns through the air. So we'll see if we see him come out and try to throw the football a little bit for Santa Barbara. Playing time roughly split even. Johnson just with a couple more snaps. Norfleet still in the game. Hands it off here on first down, and that's going to be a short gain of only three yards. The Marauder defense has been the conversation piece here for the last couple weeks, doing a great job of keeping points off the board. Two receivers to his right, one to his left in the same formation they were before. Moving the running back over, they have the heavy offensive line to the left side now. Johnson, out of the gun, hands it off here. They've been all on the ground so far today, and it looks like maybe another possible first down. It's going to be just shy. Norfleet continuing to drive down the field all the way down to the 31-yard line.
Finally wrapping him up was Jason Walker on the tackle. That offense is continuing to drive down the field. Johnson on a knee. Going under center now. Shifts around his tight end. Offset eye. Diving forward, and he might be stopped here if he's not able to get across the line, and he might not. And he's pushed back by the defense of the Marauders, and that is a stop on the line right there. They are not able to convert. And Johnson did his best to try and get up and over, and he was just stonewalled. And they're going to go quickly here on fourth down. Getting set and ready to go again. Are they going to hand it off to Norfleet? Trips receivers to his right. Takes a step in. Still has time. 31 seconds on the play clock. Handles the snap, and they're going to hand it off here. And there's a potential that Norfleet was stopped right before the line to gain, and the referees on the side are not exactly whistling or signaling for a first down, and this might be a huge fourth down stop for the Marauders, and they do have it. Santa Barbara stonewalled on fourth down. Third and fourth down, they both tried to convert on both times, and neither of the running attempts were, uh, were able to be successful. They were picked up by the defense, and a great job for the Marauders' defense on the first, first possession of Santa Barbara. Crisis averted in the best way. No points on the board for Santa Barbara, and we will see Warren back out on the field. Maybe the offense can change up a couple things. Handles the snap. Shotgun throws out on the wing towards the near side, and with a couple yards and a decent gain, was running over, I believe it was Jackson Marshall, and it was. Marshall with a gain of, we'll call it six, second and four coming up, and the Marauders with a decent start to this drive. Fakes the handoff. Warren running for it himself, and he puts his body on the line, diving towards the first down marker, but he's going to be stopped at the 40 is where he's finally cut down. Third and one, and this is a big third and one. You don't want to put your defense immediately back out on the field, maybe give them a chance to take a breath. Bankhead in the game Heavy offensive line. Hands it off to Bankhead. Bankhead finds a hole, and he's able to punch through it. He stays on his feet, and he's all the way down to the 49-yard line. They'll mark him at the 48-and-a-half. First down, Marauders. What a great job by Bankhead to go after first contact. He had the first down, and he just kept running. Marauders offense now with their second first down of the game here on the second drive. Second series coming up. They have three receivers out to the left. One is in on a blocking assignment. Warren throwing deep, and he's going to well overthrow it. This ball lands around the 15. I think the closest receiver was Reese Robinson, but he was standing around the 25 by the time the football landed. Second down and coming up from, we'll call it the 49. So a huge play from Amir Bankhead, putting the Marauders right around midfield. Maybe they can make their first trip into Vaquero territory for the day. 8.23 on the clock here in the first quarter. Handoff, cutting inside and finding a big hole and finally getting onto the football. He might have had it out of his hands for a second. Was Tajim Brown. He came in on the sweep. We are under eight minutes here in Antelope Valley, but this has been an exciting drive here and a big third down coming up here for the Marauders. Third and five is a gain of five. Line to gain will be the 41-yard line from the 46. Warren, offset pistol, doesn't hand it off, throws it over the middle, putting his body on the line and maybe staying on his feet, and he's down with the first down is Shamir Washington with his second big catch of the game. Look at that, just gets lit up a little bit and <laughs> trying to stay on his feet and get some more yards. He's finally tackled. Forward progress all the way down to the 39-yard line. He had it by two. Warren 
getting things rolling here early for the Marauders. Shifts Bankhead over to his left. He has three receivers to his right. Hands it off here on first down. Bankhead trying to set the edge, and he does, and he's going to finally get out to the 35. Gain of four yards, second and six now coming up. And we have a Santa Barbara player down there in the middle of your field. Zach Annis, number 47. He's not totally down. He's just kind of on a knee trying to get up. An athletic trainer quickly over walking him off the field. He's on his own power, so hoping for the best for him. This will be an injury timeout. Well, the Marauders moving the football with a lot of efficiency here on this second drive. And a lot of it, I think, has to do with some confusion from the linebacker core of the Vaqueros. They've been doing a very good job of mixing it up, but when Bankhead is on the ground, it makes it kind of difficult for anybody to try and guess where the football is going. Three receivers to his left, one to his right, shifts Bankhead over to his left. Warren doesn't throw here, th or doesn't hand it off, and he throws it over to Elijah Steele, Steele out of his hands. So third down and six coming up. So an incomplete pass stops the clock at 6.49. Bankhead, two Warrens right, out of the gun. Facing pressure, dumps it off to Bankhead. Bankhead all the way up to the 20, down to the 25, and he's got a first down and a great job of picking up the coverage there. They came with the blitz really quick on Warren, and Warren just kind of stood tall, looked right over the defensive line and threw it right off to Bankhead, and Bankhead, no trouble, rips up a first down, and they are into the red zone for the first time of the day. From the 16-yard line, might the Marauders be able to get the first score? We will see. Heavy offensive line here, two receivers to his left, Warren. Out of the gun, hands it off to Bankhead. Bankhead dives forward. He's got a couple. In that formation, it was potentially maybe just a scout look trying to see whether or not the linebackers of Santa Barbara would bite, and they did. They had everybody in there in the box. So second and eight coming up. Another heavy offensive line look, and might the Marauders throw here. Different running back in this time. It's Q Allen. Allen is in for uh, just protecting the quarterback. Throw it over the top, and it's a touchdown, and a touchdown for the Marauders. It's going to go straight to Shamir Washington for his first touchdown of the game. Beautiful toss and pass from Darius Wars Warren, and six points on the board. Well designed, and they didn't get exactly the coverage that they wanted, but Shamir Washington just jumping up and over the coverage. No problem at all. They loaded the box again with the linebackers, and they were just trying to set something up. That's what I thought just previously. A great job by the Marauders' offensive coordination there. Henderson on to kick the extra point. Snap is up, places down, and that's no good wide right. So the touchdown by Washington, and we have the referee walking into the middle of the huddle calling players back, and I don't know if there was a flag or something, but it looked like nobody even moved when the ball was snapped. Potentially a penalty against Santa Barbara, and it is. So it's an encroachment penalty on the Vaqueros. This will place the football at the one-yard line. And these are usually the situations where teams will run out their offense again, try to get the two-point conversion when it's only a yard away. Henderson with a second chance. Chip shop up. 
And this one good, but just barely. Wow. Low kick, but Henderson gets the job done. 7 to 0. It's 5.38 on the clock, and the Marauders come away with their first touchdown of the game. Santa Barbara defense not able to stop them. We'll take a quick break ourselves. So a different kicker in here for the Marauders. It might have Henderson potentially injured himself. That would be a problem. Rowell out to kick here for the Marauders. And we have, looks to be Terrence Beiser Coleman working his way up the middle. And the football's out! And it might be picked up by Santa Barbara, but that was a scary moment for Santa Barbara. Let's watch this again. So Coleman returning the football, and is it going to be punched out? And I think it might have been ripped out for a second. It was. The football was ripped out, and it looked to be William Alford, who had his hand on the football. So Alford doing his best to strip the football, and that would have been really, really bad for Santa Barbara. They would have been giving the football up at the 25-yard line. Johnson still in the game here for Santa Barbara and back out onto the field is Brandon Smith. So he's their number one running back on the season. Smith right into the pile, and he maybe has two yards as he's driven back, and the defense fired up here for the Marauders. Obviously, two big plays happening back-to-back, -back, or three big plays happening back-to-back. -back. They had the stop on fourth down, the stop on third down, and then they just almost stripped the football out. Special teams of defense having a good day here for the Marauders already. 5.09 on the clock and it will tick under five minutes here before the next snap. 7-0 is the score. The Marauders with Darius Warren doing everything they can to make a show, and it was it was a show. Shamir Washington with the touchdown. That was just excellent. A throw behind the receiver. Chase Wells turned around, and I don't even know if he saw the football. That was a timing route. Alex Johnson throwing, and... Just a little bit late there. I'm not exactly sure if that was timed properly, but second – or check that third – or, yeah, third down coming up. This is what I get for looking at the marker and not trusting my gut. Of course, it's third down. Third down, and we'll call it eight. Line to gain will be the 35. Personnel getting sorted out. Wells was in motion there for a second, coming out wide to the left side. Johnson, out of the gun, has his running back beside him. Shotgun snap, throwing here on third down. Flushed out of the pocket near side. Is he going to choose to throw it? He does. Throws it to his receiver, Caden Chan. And Chan was able to break out and make it all the way down the near sideline. What a way of staying on your feet. He was wrapped really well up. He should have been tackled right there. And there's just a couple of marauders not able to get the job done. First down and more for the – Vaqueros. Line to game will be the 49-yard line of the Marauders. They'll take it from the 41. Split backs here for Johnson. Two receivers out, heavy offensive line. Handles the shotgun snap, hands it off, and it's Smith. Smith along the left side. He's got a lot of room to run. Hesitates a little bit, makes a move, and he's going to be out of bounds well into Marauder territory. So another big first down here for the Vaqueros. And Smith, obviously excited. The offense of Santa Barbara moving. Now this is roughly the area that they were stopped last time. They are just past where they made it. Split backs again. Two receivers to the right of Johnson. Puts a man in motion. Hands it off to Smith. Smith up the middle. Has maybe two yards.
So all around, the Marauders' defense has been just getting better and better, and they've been spectacular on the defensive line almost all season long. Three receivers to the right, including the tight end on the right side of the line. Puts a man in motion. It's Smith. Smith in motion. Hands off. Nope. Quarterback keeper. Johnson up the middle. He's on a lot of room, and he's down to the 10-yard line. Well into a first down, and their first trip into the red zone is standing right on the doorstep on the 10. So no first down available here. They have to get to the goal line. A little bit of a different just mixing up the offensive formations here. They've been running roughly 22 personnel the whole time. Two running backs, two wide receivers. Hands it off to Smith. Smith finding a hole. He bounces off a tackle. He's into the end zone. Touchdown, Vaqueros. Not able to contain the running game of the Vaqueros at all this time. Santa Barbara with six points on the board. And Joe Bowman will kick the extra point here for the Vaqueros. Low snap, gets it off on time. Extra point up and good. So the touchdown run by Brandon Smith. And that levels things up with 2.06 to go. Making things interesting. Very exciting first half already. Both teams not able to convert on their first drive. Marauders figuring it out on their second, and so did Santa Barbara. Something tells me this is going to be a game that comes down to a single defensive play potentially completely crushing the other team's will to play offensively. <laughs> so Hunter Simmons kicking the football off here for Santa Barbara. At least that's what it's listed in the stat line. Here comes the kick. A high kick all the way back to the five-yard line. That's going to be returned by Reese. Reese cutting inside. He's going to have a lot of guys in front of him. He's going to be chopped down around the 18. Seven, we'll mark it 14-yard line. Short return. But the Marauders have been able to drive the length of the field in the past. This is no different. Clock stopped at 2.01 here in the first quarter. And we'll see Warren march his offense onto the field once again. Split backs, puts a man in motion. Looking to throw right for the design screen. This football is thrown high. And we'll see if the referee call a touchdown. They do. They say it was a backwards pass that was dropped. And that's a quick touchdown for the Vaqueros on defense. Can we watch that back again from the top angle? I need to see if this was this was actually thrown backwards. It was definitely thrown behind the line of scrimmage, but I don't know where Warren was standing at the time of the pass. Well, it looked like a lateral pass, but I'm not entirely sure. Hard to tell from that angle. Extra point coming here for the Vaqueros. Extra point up and good. That is definitely not the way that you want things to go. 158 now on the clock. A quick little shift of momentum there. The Marauders are going to have to find a way to get the points back in their favor. Remember, the Vaqueros are to, going to take the football in the second half. So 
Potentially questionable, but nobody seems to be really fighting it. Now that is out of the way. The Marauders need to turn the leaf here and score on this next drive. That is a rare mistake from Warren. The Vicaros have the lead here in the first quarter. Kickoff, same spot towards the right side. Return up to the 24, and I would be surprised if there's not a flag there down on the near side. That was Cameron Carlisle returning the football, and he was almost suplexed and thrown down. The referee is saying let play. I mean, I cannot believe that one. I mean, you guys saw it. I'll call it a tackle. All right. So from the 24-yard line, puts a man in motion. Warren doesn't hand it off to Reese. Down the near side trying to find some space, and there is a flag out on the field. And I don't know if he's going to get Daryl Lloyd for a push off here. We'll see if it's a, it's a pass interference for sure, but the referee is going to have a flag out, and it might have been an excessive contact before the push off. And I see the referees pointing in the direction of the Marauder offensive line. So this is interesting. Or uh, Marauder's end zone. And it's going to be a holding. Okay, so there's the holding call. A little bit of a confusion, <laughs> confusing hand signal from the near side referee. But sorted out nonetheless. So first down, the Marauders catch a break here on the first series of this drive. Warren to throw here on first down, overthrow, and doing a great job of trying to bring the football down with Shamir Washington. And his effort there was actually a little bit extra. It would have resulted in potentially an interception had he not dropped the football down with his right hand. So potentially a turnover saving play there from Washington. The third drive of the quarter. Hands it off. On second down, maybe getting a yard was Q Allen. And Allen was the intended receiver just a drive ago where the football was dropped and brought into the end zone for a touchdown for the Vaqueros. They're trying to get something positive going. They give him two, so third and eight now coming up and a big third down for the Marauders. The defense has been on the field for a long time today, already in the first quarter. 1-16 ticking down. Warren out of the gun, two receivers to his left, two to his right. Throwing here, throwing behind the receiver, well in front of the receiver, it was intended for Elijah Steele. And here comes the punting unit for the Marauders. Henderson back out, so no issues there. The crisis averted more so. Potentially with a foot injury or something like that, you don't want to see it. So none to speak of. One oh seven is where the clock has stopped. Henderson, lots of time to get the punt off this time. Fair catch is going to be called, and that's going to be an easy flag. I don't know what the intention from TJ Graham was there, but he just runs right into the return man. So Caden Chan was just standing there, called for the fair catch, and that's a that's a really egregious penalty there. Not egregious, just unintentional, or not unintentional, but why? That's the only question that I have to ask as the commentator here. So legal contact, bringing the football up 15 yards. To give the Vaqueros nice starting position here on 
on first down. Right at midfield. No man's land is where they will start the drive. And they'll start in that 22 personnel again. Two backs, two receivers out, heavy offensive line. Johnson hands it off. Smith right up the middle, and they're going to get that two-yard gain that they've been getting consistently on that first down run. Might they be trying to do some other types of trickery as well? They did not move the football really at all through the air last drive. final throws of the first quarter. There'll be one more play before it's all said and done. Split backs again. Johnson out of the gun. Handles the snap. He's throwing here on second down. Throws near side. Finds a receiver. Is he able to get a first down? And they will call him out a yard shy. First down coming to Chase Wells. Will they try to get a playoff before the end of the quarter? Third and short coming up. And the teams are walking to the sidelines. So we're going to take a break just as well as they are. Scores 14 to 7 after the first quarter and a lot of things to talk about going into the second quarter and halftime. You're watching SoCal College Sports coverage of ABC football. All right, back and getting things going here for a start of the second quarter. Out of the gun, Johnson hands it off to Smith. Smith able to get a first down. He's going to bounce off another tackler, making quite a move, and he's going to come back towards the line of scrimmage, and he's able to get the first down regardless with forward progress up to roughly the 38-yard line is where they're going to call him. So first down and 10 from the 38, 14.50 on the clock. The clock will start moving the moment the football is placed down. The Vaqueros avoiding a third down situation, turning into a fourth down, but they've already gone for it once on fourth down. We're not able to convert. And Santa Barbara moving here on their third drive of the first half. 22 personnel again, heavy offensive line. and it almost forces you to keep your linebackers in the box. Johnson throwing here, and he's going to be hit. He's going to bounce off and run towards the near side, throwing on the run, and that's going to be well overthrown. And that was a near opportunity from the uh, defensive line of the Marauders. And coming in off the edge was Cannon Jordan. That was a big opportunity missed, but enough to keep it second and ten. R.B. Wilson and Ken and Jordan, just, that was the heavy pursuit there, and they've been doing a great job all season. Ken and Jordan still looking for his first sack of the season. Handoff here on second down, diving forward and with a really strong run of six yards. Look to be Norfleet back on the field. He handled snaps in the first half. We have a Marauder player with their helmet off. That was Doran Mitchell. He has the most, well, he's tied for the most tackles for loss here on the season. Four and a half tackles for loss for minus 24. So that's not who you want coming out here on third down. Third and four coming up. Well, they have it marked third and five. Line to gain would be the 28. They're standing at the 33 for the line of scrimmage. 
would appear the football is at the 33. So, Johnson out of the gun, throwing all the way here on third down. Fires near side, and he's going to have a receiver down, Caden Chan. First down and more. That was a quick pass. It's a little slant route ran out there. And the Vaqueros looking to move quickly here on first down. They're into the red zone. Fires, bubble screen along the right side. They have the personnel for it and trying to dive forward. Looks like Prince Borton. Hard to see. His uniform is scrunched up. Or B.J. Phillips. That was B.J. Phillips, number five, with the reception. So second and six coming up from the 15-yard line. Really doing a lot with these heavy offensive line sets here for the Vaqueros. Hands it off. Norfleet. Trying to get a lot. And we have, wow, he gets a really good spot here, just a yard shy of the first down. So third and one coming up. So the Vaqueros potentially putting a two scores up. Marauders defense looking to keep it to just a field goal. Split backs, hands it off here on third down. They're going to have the first down. And it'll be first and goal from the six-yard line. Under 12 minutes to go here in the first half. We have Johnson coming off the field. Might we see Sean Smith in at quarterback, and he is. Sean Smith will be in at the gun. Two receivers to his left, heavy offensive line again. Potentially trying to get the job done on the ground. Handles the snap, keeps it himself, and he's going to be running towards the near side, and he's going to be tackled and hit hard. Maybe a gain of two yards. They'll have him up to the five or five or check that four and a half yard line. Watch him get flipped upside down. A good job of team tackling here. Cameron Carlisle. Maybe getting a little bit back as he was flipped upside down the last time he returned the football down towards the near sideline. Second down and four to the goal line. Three receivers out, and it's still Sean Smith. Put Smith in motion. Whistles now. And we're going to have a timeout called by the Marauders. So they're going to sit and talk this over. We'll take a break ourselves. 10-32 remaining in the first half, 7-14. to Vaqueros on the doorstep. So the offense back out on the field, and they're going to have a shift of position running all of their run their wide receivers along the near side. Trips receivers out, and they still have that heavy offensive line. Smith in motion out to the right. So four receivers out. Defensive line almost jumps offside. Running forward, trying to get to the end zone is Sean Smith, and Smith not able to get there, and an offensive lineman's helmet comes off. So there will be an offensive lineman off the field 
and we will see Alex Johnson make his way onto the field. Third down. And two to the goal line, and another timeout called by the Marauders. We'll keep it right here. Lots of things to figure out here from the Marauders' defensive side of things as Johnson comes back out on the field. It was a little bit of a wildcat situation with Sean Smith out on the field. The Santa Barbara Vaqueros have really been able to move the football at ease on the ground. This is the first time they see them a little bit stumbling as it is their down. And might we see them go for it on fourth if they do get the opportunity? We don't know. 10.25 on the clock. So really now on the doorstep at the two-yard line. Third down. Johnson in. He's got four receivers out. This is a very traditional-looking offense for the first time to this afternoon. Johnson out of the gun. Throwing here on third down towards the edge of the end zone. Does he have his feet in? No good. They're going to call it no good. And it was a pass attempt to B.J. Phillips, and he was not able to keep his feet in. Might we have a replay of that one? So I think the Marauder is potentially getting away with one here as we rewatch it from the top angle. Johnson hands it off, trying to find the edge, and he does, and he's able to push one man out of the way. Brandon Smith, touchdown, Vaqueros. So they'll make it a two-touchdown lead here in the second half. Smith just pushing a man out of the way. You can understand why the Vaqueros are 6-1 and one on the season. So Brandon Smith gets his 13th touchdown on the season. Then had a lot of yards. Already had 879 coming into the season, or coming into this game. Extra point, up and good. 21-7, to seven. we're going to take a break right after this. 10-16 on the clock, Marauders to get the football next. We'll see you in a few moments. So kickoff coming, the Marauders will start with their fourth drive of the game. So punt, fumble, punt. Return from Reese. Reese working his way from the 30. There's a flag out, and he's out by the 35, and there should be another flag out for a late hit out of bounds. So that's the second time they've done this today, and I am finally happy to see a flag come out. If you can tell, I'm a little bit upset that this is only the second time that this happened, and they called it only one time out of that. So we'll see how the penalty flags are worked out. Reese does a great job of making a secondary move. Check that. It's been punt, touchdown, fumble, then punt. So this will be the fifth. Um, this will be the fifth possession of the game here for the Marauders. And we'll see exactly what the referee has to say about it. 
So there's a block in the back, and then there's going to be a personal foul. And I believe those penalties will offset, but I'm not entirely sure how that's worked out from the referee point of view. And if I'm not mistaken, one's a dead ball penalty, the other one's not. So what would happen is the football would be brought back to the position of the block in the back. Then it would be assessed half the distance to the goal line and then a 15-yard penalty from there. So the football will be returned back to the Marauders up to the 25-yard line. And that should be how we get to where we're at today. 10-10 on the clock here. Seven for the Marauders, 21 for the Vaqueros. The Vaqueros have answered three unanswered touchdowns. One by way of coming on the ground from Brandon Smith. The second one from a fumble recovery into the end zone on that messed up lateral. And then the second one, obviously, we just watched it from Brandon Smith. And might the Marauders be able to do something on offense here? Three receivers out, one to the right, and we have a different man in at quarterback here for the Marauders. Direct, handles a direct snap, Ch Callan Crawford. Jumps forward and the football is out and it might be a fumble recovered by the Vaqueros and it is. That's what people are signaling and the referees are gonna call it. First play, fumbled and picked up. That's the second time a drive has started with a fumble recovered by the Vaqueros. And the Marauders cannot get out of their own way. The defense back out onto the field. from the 20 yard line. And off from Norfleet. Norfleet up for a couple yards. Second down and seven coming up. They'll mark it eight actually. From the 28 yard line, line to gain will be the 20. Marauders desperately needing to figure some things out on offense right now because two fumbles on the first play of a possession is just an issue. Running forward, Johnson is going to be hit and dropped down. He's going to have a little bit of a gain. That was not a read option. He just kind of ran with the football as he saw the pocket collapsing, and I believe it was Arby Wilson coming in trying to hit him. So third and five coming up, definitely within field goal range. And they've been really good on third down this afternoon. Bowman's long is a 44 yard field goal and he'll be in that area around 40 on this season. Johnson out of the gun and whistles for a timeout against the Marauders. So the Marauders use their first timeout. I had been calling it Santa Barbara, or, uh, Marauder timeouts beforehand. It was actually two Santa Barbara timeouts to try and figure out what they were gonna do down near the goal line. And they will have an opportunity to talk it over. Once again, we'll take a quick break. 8.34 on the clock, seven to 21. The Caros lead the Marauders. So a quick little break, three receivers out to the left, including the heavy offensive line. And I can imagine in close games, this might be to set up a pass to the tight end. As the tight end will shift sides on the running, uh, on the offensive line, and the running back has moved out into the field. He's on the run, gonna choose to keep it, and Johnson's gonna be hit behind the line of scrimmage. He's gonna be dropped, fourth down coming up, and a big, 
big third down play as Johnson is going to be dropped for the first time of the game. And is it a loss? It's not. And the offense will stay out on the field. So hold your horses now. The Marauders thought they had an opportunity there, but the Vaqueros have been moving the football with enough efficiency this so far this afternoon that they really haven't even considered kicking a field goal. They have the two touchdown lead and might they go for the first down here? They will. Runs offense onto the field, three receivers out to the left. Heavy offensive line again. Puts the man in motion. Moving the running back around and might they try to do the fake handoff again. Spine comes in the linebackers of the Marauders. Now back in motion, Norfleet moving towards the left side. They'll have everybody on the left side of the field. Johnson looks over to the sideline and there's gonna be another timeout called and it's gonna be called by the Vaqueros. So the Vaqueros burn their final timeout and I don't know if there was a matter of confusion or something like that, but here comes the kicking unit of the Vaqueros as they'll go to kick their first field goal attempt of the game. And like we were talking about it before, Joe Bowman, he's going to be doing the place kicking, and he's going to have a 42-yard attempt here. His long of the season has been 44 yards. So we'll see if he can get it. So here comes Bowman, 42 yards. He's hit 44 so far this season. Kick is up, drifting towards the left, and it's going to be good. A long field goal attempt converted from Bowman. Bowman able to get the job done. It's a three-score game here. Well, technically two-score, but you'd have to convert two two-point conversions to get the lead back. And the Marauders with a lot of work to do. 7.34 on the clock. You're watching Antelope Valley College Marauder football here on SoCal College Sports. Kicking units out for both teams. Return team, you got Robinson Reese and a different return. Let me check my numbers here. And that's a different guy out to return. Looks like number 11 for the Marauders. Kick is up. Reese. Handles it around his two-yard line. Reese had a good return last time. He's running back towards inside. He makes a move. He's got the open on the left side. He's going down the far side, makes another move. He pushes a man down, and he's down by the 44. Great run back from Robinson Reese. And if he has to do something to get this offense moving, that was it. That might be a spark plug. Great job on special teams and totally catches the Vaqueros off guard as they were kind of settling into a little bit of a groove there. The Marauders with a potential opportunity, great Offensive field position, 7.25 on the clock here in the first half, and if there could be a timestamp of maybe a feel-good moment before the end of halftime, this could be it. It might take seven minutes. It might take less than that for the Marauders to drive the field. However, if they can get out of their own way, rem reminder, the first five possessions have been a punt, a touchdown, a fumble, a punt, and another fumble. Here we go. Warren out of the gun, hands it off. Bankhead into the middle of the pile, and he's going to be maybe up for a gain of one, and the referee doesn't even give him that. Personally, I believe a bad spot. So second and ten coming up. Bankhead still the single back with Warren. Four receivers out. Defense doing their job for Santa Barbara. They've been very good this afternoon, except for one drive of the Marauders. Two to his left, two to his right. Warren, out of the gun, puts a man in motion. Handles the football. Throwing over the middle. Shamir Washington, down through the middle of the field. Does he have the pace? Five, touchdown, Marauders! The Marauders able to get one back, and that was a heck of a way to do it, and there's a flag out for an excessive celebration. But Shamir Washington, Puts the Marauders back on the board in a heck of a way to get this team fired back up. 13 to 24, and that puts the Marauders back in a couple. 
Here comes the kick. The penalty will most likely be assessed at the end of this. So we'll see it on the kickoff. And what a great job by Shamir Washington. So that'll be assessed at the kickoff. Won't change the point after. Here comes the extra point. High snap, kicked straight up through the uprights. No, it's no good. Thirteen to twenty-four will be the score. So that actually keeps the Marauders still at a two-score game. They can do it with a touchdown, a two-point conversion, and a field goal. So Shamir Washington, second touchdown of the game. And that was the kind of play that you're expecting to see from the Marauders. And this, unfortunately, the unsportsmanlike conduct will put the football down to the 20-yard line. So Henderson, with some work to do here, trying to get this football an opportunity to be downed. Santa Barbara standing around their 20-yard line. Long kick over the head and maybe potentially a great opportunity for the Marauders to be able to get this guy stopped behind the 20-yard line. Making a move, running up to the 25, and he's not going to be stopped short, but this is a great job by special teams again. Henderson with a great kick down to the 10-yard line, catching him by surprise. On the return was Coleman. And he does a great job of getting that football after it went right over his head. Scary moment of worry there. Good return up to the 28-yard line. 6.30 on the clock to go. Johnson will lead his team back out onto the field. Something tells me they're not going to really change what they're doing. They've been moving the football relatively effectively. Three receivers to the right, one to the left. So a normal trips offense here. Out of the gun, running back beside him. Hands it off here on first down. Smith dives forward for maybe a yard and a half. We'll call it two. That's how they started every single drive so far. So touchdown, touchdown, field goal as well as a fumble recovered for a touchdown is how we get here for Santa Barbara. Johnson out of the gun, looking to throw right. He has a receiver, dropped pass. Second, third down coming up here. And that was just thrown really low. A huge third down here for the ABC defense. And if they can stop them here, this would potentially help change things up and keep the score a one-score game. Remember, Santa Barbara does get the football back in the second half. 5.49 on the clock after the incomplete pass. Johnson throwing here on third down, throws well over the middle, has an open receiver, making a move and trying to dodge a little bit more is B.J. Phillips. B.J. Phillips trying to bounce off another tackle, and he does. And that guy is quick, all the way down to the 47-yard line is what they're going to call it. First and 10. Well, they've had answers on most third down situations. They are one for two on fourth down. 
but very effective in third down. Goes back to the heavy offensive line. They hand it off here on first down. Smith driving forward. He's going to have a good gain of five yards. Football placed at the 49 of the Marauders. Line to gain will be the 43. Let's check that. It was a four-yard gain, second and six now coming up. And what impresses me the most is the Vaquero's ability to just rattle off chunk yards like they do. Every single play seems to be a net of at least four yards. Man in motion. Split receivers. Split backs. Johnson out of the gun. Hands it off this time. This time it's to Norfleet. Norfleet dives into the pile. Maybe has two yards. Down to the 47. So third and medium coming off. Third and four. From the 47, they have to make the 43. Another third down situation. Right around midfield. Johnson, two receivers to his left, two backs beside him. Throwing here on third down. He's going to face a little bit of pressure. He's tapped on the shoulder, but he's going to have time to throw. Throwing down a receiver. Streaking up. He's trying to almost intercept it. It is intercepted, and the Marauders' defense makes a huge play to Sean Sanders, who has a couple on the season, just makes another unbelievable catch, turns around. And what a great job by DeJon Sanders, who makes his third interception of the season, and the Marauders able to make a turnaround play this time. The first huge turnover of the game from Santa Barbara comes by way of a th long pass down the near sideline. And I will tell you something, that is not common from Johnson. He only has four interceptions on the season. Great job by the Marauders defense. They're pinned back in their own red zone. But consider this a huge opportunity for the offense if they can positively turn this into points. Warren, out of the gun, two receivers to the right. Hands it off. Bankhead cuts and makes a move, drives inside, and he's going to have a nice little gain of six yards. Check that. That wasn't Bankhead. That was Q Allen. And a little extracurricular activity going along the near sideline, but referees quick on it. They didn't call any flags. 3.26 on the clock. And we have the referees conferring on the sideline. There is a flag out. Okay, so there is a flag. Extracurricular activity definitely for sure. And to say that there's a little bit of energy in this game is an understatement. waiting for the words of the white cap and they're going to still talk about it so there's a personal foul against the marauders that's going to be a personal foul i guess against the vaqueros and those penalties are going to be assessed as a half the distance to the goal line against the Marauders. So they'll get the football. It'll be second down. Second down coming up from the eight-yard line. So line to gain will be the 20-yard line. they got to go 12 yards and two downs. Warren almost on the cusp of his own end zone. 
Looking to throw here. Short little pass towards the near side, looking for the screen, stepping out of bounds. I don't know if he got that much out of it. They'll say he was up to the seven yard line. That was Gene Brown. So back to the line of scrimmage. He really wasn't able to get anything. Third down and 12 now coming up, and the Marauders need to do the best to get their punter out of their own end zone. Or quickly convert here with 3.10 on the clock. Here comes the offense, Warren, third down and long. Has to do something. Third and 13, looking to throw here. He's going to be under pressure. He steps up into the pocket. He's going to choose to run. Choosing to run with it. He's going to make it all the way up to the 15. Can he get to the 20? No. But that's a huge job by Warren just to step out of his own end zone. And the punter will be standing at the end zone, but this will not be nearly into the back. So fourth down coming up, and there's no way they'd be going for it on fourth down here as Henderson is going to have to punt it away. Caden Chan standing around the 50, punt up and away over his head. This is a nice spiraling punt from Henderson and a great job getting it down towards the 20 and it'll be picked up around the 21. Chan giving no respect and Henderson answers with a long punt. We're gonna take a break, 2.16 on the clock, 13 to 24, Marauders not able to get it done, but the defense back out on the field. We'll see you in just a few moments. So, Santa Barbara with their fifth offensive drive, and this might be the last of the half. We'll see. 2.16 on the clock, and we have Johnson in the offset eye formation. Out, under, out of under center, two-yard gain here from Smith. That's some good classic football right there. Just a toss. Towards the near side, I mean, just good good work for the defense to get there. Stop the extra gain of yards, trying to do a little bit of change of direction. Still under center, Johnson. Throwing here. Moving, dancing around, moving towards the far side. He's going to choose to keep it. Throws it on the run and out of bounds. Looked like he was going to potentially try and get the edge there for a moment. Third and long now coming up, and might they punt it away if they don't convert here? I mean, this is the part of the field that you definitely wouldn't go for it on fourth down, but I've been stumped in the past. So from the 23-yard line, third and eight coming up. Johnson out of the gun. He's got two receivers to his right. They hand it off. Fake the handoff. No, Johnson throws on the run trying to get a screen. Are they going to be able to make a move? And it's going to be B.J. Phillips trying to cut his way up to the first down marker, but he's going to be just shy at the 30-yard line, and they might keep the offense out now. We'll see exactly what happens, and there's going to be a timeout called with 119 on the clock, and we'll see which personnel comes out for Santa Barbara. Might we see them go for it on fourth down? Punter isn't exactly out onto the field quite yet. Brandon Bowers, let's see if we can see a 66 on the sideline. And there he goes. So, 
Santa Barbara will march their punting unit onto the field. They're one yard shy of the first down. Line to game would have been the 31. Out to return will be Robinson Reese. Or Reese Robinson, not Robinson Reese. Reese Robinson. Who had an unbelievable return. Just a few moments ago. Low snap, handled well, punted off, and it's going to be a low punt, depending on how the football bounces. It's going to be picked up. Santa Barbara touchdown at the 25. So the Marauders with 110 on the clock. Another opportunity to try and march the football down the field. 13 to 24 is the score line. This has been an incredibly strange first half, especially how it's developed. And the Marauders will get their eighth drive of the game. Jackson Marshall. In at running back. Warren throws short and just off the hands of Marshall. Marshall trying to do what they did with Bankhead earlier. He's just turning around on a short little dump off pass when the pressure was right in Warren's face. Defensive line trying to just blitz through. They had the linebackers up. That was exactly what Santa Barbara wanted to do right there defensively. Here comes second and 10 from the 25. Warren out of the gun again. Hands it off. Cutting and making a move. Jackson Marshall, he's still on his feet. Cuts outside. Down to the 40. Maybe is he down to the 50? We'll see. All the way down to the 50-yard line. They'll mark him at the 49. A huge run, and the clock has stopped momentarily. 58.2 seconds. And the Marauders are going to try and move quickly here. Personnel is ready to go. Football set down. Clock is moving. Referee is just getting set. Hand off again. Diving forward and not able to get it done. <laughs> you can see the offensive line of Marauders getting after it a little bit there. Clock is still running. 33 seconds. Marauders need to find a way to get the football moved forward without the clock running out. Rolling to his right, throwing, finding an open receiver. And does he have enough time on the clock? He does. Robinson Reese down to the end zone. Touchdown, Marauders. Cash it in. And what a way to catch the Vaqueros off guard. And an unbelievable catch and run as Warren was under the duress. And they will get the ball into the end zone. Unbelievable. 12.2 seconds left on the clock, and that might be a statement as the Marauders 19 to 24, pending the extra point, and they will keep the offense out onto the field to put it within a field goal. Remember, the Vaqueros get the football back in the second half, but that is a huge catch and throw. Robinson Reese, Reese Robinson to Darius Warren. Nineteen to twenty-four, and the offense is out on the field to potentially run a two-point conversion here. This has turned into a dogfight in a way that I don't think the Vaqueros were wanting, and that's just been the thing about Warren. He's been able to move on his feet and just kind of dump the football off and, you know, ways the, off, the, the defenses are not expecting. Reese Robinson with his second touchdown of the season. I don't know if that statistic is totally correct. But here comes the offense. Well, lots of scoring to talk about at halftime. 
The offense out on the field. Warren rolls out near side. He has time to throw now. He's going to be hit and potentially wrapped up and thrown down. And the Vaquero players getting out some frustration. Kobe Sarna throwing down Darius Warren and then yelling at him as he's down on the ground. Glad to see sportsmanship still really big and important. Nonetheless, Marauders will kick it off and give it to the Vaqueros as they will start their sixth drive. And I'm curious to see whether or not they will want to continue to run an offensive play with 12 seconds on the board. High tensions down on the field as this is a very important game. Both teams coming to play here. 12 seconds left in the first half. 19 to 24 is the score line. The Marauders only able to convert once on the extra points. Football is dropped in the end zone. Now finally getting back to the return. Punching a hole and actually working his way well up into the field was Caden Chan. And we'll see what transpires here. Defense out on the field, obviously offense huddling up, looking to have a conversation here. Might they try to play one down with 5.2 seconds left on the clock? Well, Johnson will certainly be under center, but it looks like they have, okay, all the personnel, knee is down, and that will be the end of the first half. 19 to 24, an exciting first half of football to say the least is what's been transpiring here in Antelope Valley. You're watching Marauder Football on SoCal College Sports. We'll see you after halftime.
22, and as Frank would say, okay. Let me give a quick reminder all of our student athletes and all the recruits that are here for the game today. You can make your way up top for the stadium to get some pizza, have some food. We appreciate you being here. Uh, our next presentation today, we're going to do a uh, presentation for the president. The president created a wonderful program called You Got Caught. So I'm going to turn it over to Bruce, our stadium announcer, where he will do the announcements. He's reading them off right now. Oh, okay. Go sit down now, huh? Congratulations, Thank you. Right. Congratulations. Congratulations. Stephanie Spiegel. Angel Stanley Hunter. Tanisha Steens. Sebastian Tellez Vargas. LaDonna Trimble. William Law. Adrian Wright. Dr. Mercy Jewell. Jennifer Ray. And thank you, thank you, Bruce, for that presentation, and thank you to all the people that participated. What I'd like you to do, if you give me a moment, is uh, direct your attention to the uh, field down here, especially student athletes. All you guys look down here. We're going to introduce Dr. Jennifer Zellett. Dr. Zellett's our new president here at Antelope Valley College. We're going to allow her to say a couple things. Thank you, Tom, and thank you all for being here today to celebrate homecoming. This is a wonderful event for our college and for uh, supporting our student athletes. Thank you so much for showing up. The, the people who were just honored on the field, we had a one month long campaign called You Got Caught Doing Something Good. And anybody on the campus could nominate anyone that they saw doing a kind deed for someone else. And we had over 70 people who received this award. And you saw me handing out a little coin on the front. It has the crest of Antelope Valley College. And on the back, it says, Serve Students, Be Kind. You'll see some people walking around with that on, our, on their t-shirts. And that's been our theme for this year, just serve each other and be kind. 
Thank you for being here. Enjoy the game and go Marauders.
And we are back live here for the second half action. Just a reminder, you're watching SoCal College Sports coverage of Antelope Valley College Marauder football. Well, an exciting first half. Yielded a lot of different change of hands and possession and lots of touchdowns scored. 15 minutes on the board. We're ready to start the third quarter. And returning the football will be the Vaqueros as they had won the coin toss and deferred to the second half. A little chip shot towards the right side. Returning the football is B.J. Phillips running towards the near side, and he had a lot of runs earlier in the game, and he's coming real far down the near side. And check that, that's not Phillips. But starting with great field position, getting things going, that's Terrence Beiser Coleman. With a long return, getting things started. So 14.50 on the clock, first and 10 for the Vaqueros from the Marauder 33-yard line. Alex Johnson out onto the field. No touchdowns, one interception, but two hands off for touchdowns to Brandon Smith, who is on the field right now and will take the first carry of the half all the way up to the 31-yard line. It'll be a two-yard gain, second and eight now coming up. And that was a familiar down and distance in the first half for the Vaqueros. Tight end, Sundquist is off the field. Four receivers spread out for the Vaqueros. Smith is still in beside Johnson. Johnson out of the gun. Run play. Jet sweep out the outside and a great tackle in pursuit. And B.J. Phillips is going nowhere. He's been really effective this afternoon in the first half. But he was tackled and didn't go anywhere with that football on the jet sweep. And that is a great job on the defense from Ethan John coming in and making a huge tackle from the linebacker core. They went into zone. They didn't initially press him. And wow. So third and ten coming up. And great field starting position for the Vaqueros. And a big third down conversion coming here. Four receivers out, throwing here on third down. A little bit of pressure, throws over the middle, an incomplete pass. And B.J. Phillips had a little tiny window to complete the pass, but that will be it. Fourth down coming up where they keep the offense out on the field. And this is a huge, huge distance to gain. Ten yards is a lot. And here comes the kicking unit. We'll see if it's the punting unit, and it is. Brandon Bauer is out to punt the football. Fourth and ten. He's going to be standing around the Marauder 48-yard line. Might they actually get the penalty to put the football back and give them a chance? You can see, you can hear the sideline of the Marauders saying, do not catch that football, let it go. Cameron Carlisle out to return the football if it's really, really good. This one a short punt up into the air around the 10-yard line, and this is going to take a really good roll for the Vaqueros, pinning the Marauders real deep. So a negative turn into the positive, but the first drive of the second half is a three and out for the Vaqueros after they get the unbelievable return from Terrence Coleman. Onto the field will be Darius Warren, bringing his offense out for their first offensive possession. Their miscues were the issue on offense in the first half, two of them turning into a Santa Barbara touchdown and one of them turning into a Santa Barbara possession. And you're going to see a flag and a whistle. We'll see what we call from the line. Referees coming in to confer. It looked like an encroachment, but we'll see exactly what the call is from the head referee. Football would only move half of the distance to the goal line if it was a false start. So it's going to be a neutral zone infraction or a false uh, or a 
or an encroachment penalty against the Vaqueros that backs or gets the Marauders out of their own end zone for now. Warren out of the gun, hands it off. Burkett, Bankhead diving forward. He's going to have a couple yards. And maybe a first down. It'll be third and one coming up, all the way up to the Marauder 12-yard line. Line the game will be the 13. Hand off again. Bankhead hit behind the line of scrimmage, and he's going to be stopped. And a net negative three and out as well for the Marauders, and we'll see the offense maybe stay on. Check that the f the penalty kept it at the first uh, first down. So my mistake. Third down and one now coming up after the no gain on the play. Bank had not able to really dive forward for anything. Warren out of the gun. He's got four receivers out for him. Bankhead moves out, but it's going to be Reese Robinson. Reese Robinson down the near side, all the way down to the 33, 32 yard line, and a first down move the chains. Marauders on the move with their first possession of the second half. 12-15 on the clock, and it's going to start ticking down now. 19-24 to is the score line. Trips receivers bunched on the left side. This handed off to Bankhead. Bankhead making a move, running right side. He's got space in front of him. He's breaking away. He's faster than the defense. Down to the 20, down to the 10. Touchdown, Marauders. And the first possession turns into a touchdown. And the Marauders able to cash in. They'll take the lead for the first time in the second half. And 11.54 is on the clock in this. That Carrolls were doing nothing on offense, and they handed the football right back to the Marauders, who marched all the way down the field. Remember, this drive started at the three-yard line, 25 to 24, pending the extra point. Amir Bankhead with a huge run to start off the second half. Touchdown, Marauders, and Henderson will try to put it through to make it a two-point lead. Extra point is blocked. And there is a flag down, and we'll see. Let's watch that again one more time if we can. Oh, and the it was the holder who just got kneed in the head. And there's a flag out somewhere around the line. I don't know if that was for the hit on the holder, but the holder is generally a protected player in this play. So the extra point is incomplete. I'm assuming because of where the referee is running, it will be assessed on the kickoff. So 25 to 24 is the scoreline, not able to complete the extra point. Regardless, the Marauders retain the lead. And the Marauders will kick off. Well, the Vaqueros quickly getting their second possession. Second possession coming here for the Vaqueros. That's return. They have Coleman and Chan. Coleman near side, Chan far side. Kickoff, fielded by Coleman. Coleman around the 10-yard line, cutting back inside, and a great pursuit and tackle, and behind the 25, so a great job by the special teams of the Marauders. Just look at this pursuit of Markavis Evans. Check that, that was Jalen Williams with the pursuit and tackle there. 
Johnson out on the field, split backs. Going back to what was kind of working in the first half. Split backs handoff here. It's Norfleet. Norfleet diving down another four-yard gain. Second and six coming up. Touchdown by Reese Robinson. Beer Bankhead. And Shamir Washington. He's got two on the day. It's an all offensive day here. Ball tipped at the line. And that was Gannon Guinness with his hands up. Watch this. Hit right at the line. Johnson out of the gun. And he was looking right. And all of a sudden, you just see the hands pop up. Great job by the defensive line of the Marauders. It might have been Kanan Jordan who had his hands up as well. So a third down and five coming up. Might the Marauders be able to stop them on third down here again. Three receivers out, including a tight end in on the set. We'll see if he goes out. Out of the gun. He does. Tight end is out on the field, running for his life. Johnson trying to do something, gets it off to Smith. Smith trying to make a move, and he's going to have the first down. He's hit out of bounds around the 37-yard line. So moves the chains that get their first first down of the second half. 10.56 ticking down. R.B. Wilson, their center screen. 10.40 on the clock, first and 10. Smith, diving forward, gain of four. It'll be second and six coming up. Can the defense do something else? Offset eye here. Johnson tossed to the right side, or to his left side, trying to set the edge, and he kind of gets it, but is just shy of the first down. Brown Smith not able to get to the first down marker. He's about a yard shy. Third down coming up. Just kind of a toss power to the end. We'll go offset eye once again. Handoff. Toss power trap to Smith, and Smith is going to have the first down. And he's been getting a lot of first downs for the Vaqueros. Just outside of midfield from the 48-yard line. Line to gain will be the 42 of the Marauders. 9.20 on the clock, taking down first and 10. Offset eye once again. Along the left hash, two receivers out here for Johnson. Johnson tosses it to Smith. Smith trying to work his way towards the line of scrimmage. He's going to be hit, and he's going to be maybe dropped behind the line of scrimmage for a loss in the Marauders' defense with a big play here on first down. So 8.38 ticking down, second and now 12. Loss of yards on the last play, and that's a good tackle for loss for the Marauders. They need all the space they can get. Line to gain is the 42. Back into the gun, three receivers to his right, including an extra tight end. Fakes the handoff, throws over the middle, and this is between two receivers. 
And that was incomplete straight through the hands of DeMar Ward. <coughs> and he had Ward wide open. You just see him kind of miss the throw. And I don't know if the throw was actually intended for Chase Wells. It might have been a little bit behind him. Well, it was definitely behind Ward. So Wells would have been the guy that was targeted, but they were kind of in a rub route together. And hard to tell if the rub route there was the was the reasoning why the quarterback threw it to the uh, to where he did. Because what meets the eye is that he threw it to the wrong guy, but I don't think that was actually the case. He threw it to the right guy, tipped at the line! Third down, incomplete, and that will bring up fourth down and maybe the punting unit here for the Vaqueros. The Marauders, huge on defense, and that was tipped by R.B. Wilson. And Reese Robinson out on the field to return the punt. And the Vaqueros with two punting drives in a row, and the Marauders with one scoring. 25 to 24, 8 12 on the clock, taking down after the incomplete pass. Punt is away just in time. Reese, Reese calling for the fair catch around the 13-yard line, and that's where they're going to mark it. So they'll start their drive well in their own, own territory. It is not like the Marauders have done that at all today because they have a number of times. Only drive of the second half is a touchdown, and things were a little bit interesting in the first half for the Marauders. It was a punt, a touchdown, two Shamir Washington, then a fumble for a touchdown that ended up being a score for the Santa Barbara Vaqueros, then a punt, another fumble, touchdown by Shamir Washington, a punt, a touchdown by Reese Robinson, and this is how we get to the second half, one touchdown on the ground from Amir Bankhead. Out of the gun, Bankhead taking the carry. And that might be Q Allen, actually, check that. And it is. Q Allen with the run. No gain on the play. Second and 10 coming up from the 13 yard line. Line to gain will be the 23. Darius Warren hands it off. Allen up the middle again. He's got a gain of maybe two. Third down and seven coming up. He'll have the third yard from the 16-yard line. Out of the gun. Throwing here directly under pressure. Hands it off. Q. Allen trying to do something and just get some space, and they're going to lose yardage here as they go out of bounds. No hit out of bounds, so no flags on the play. But there is a flag on the far side, and we'll see exactly where that's called. Maybe a holding penalty. And it's going to be offsides. Wow. Offsides penalty will give a five-yard gain and a repeat of third down. So it was a free play, and this is a huge opportunity for the Marauders to be able to convert it. Two, third and two now from the 21-yard line line. The game will be the 23. Clock is now back running. 6.47 left to go here in the third quarter. 25 to 24 is the score line. Personnel still getting worked out. 15 seconds on the play clock, plenty of time. Guys getting moved around. Still guys moving around. Clock might become an issue, and we're going to hear a whistle for a timeout, and that was a big miscue here from the Marauders as they were able, not able to get their personnel set up before that play. 25 seconds will be on the play clock, 628 on the game clock, and we're going to take a break with the timeout. You're watching Marauder Football on SoCalCollegeSports.com.
return after the timeout. 6.28 on the clock. Marauders finally able to sort their personnel out. So we're going to see maybe the pistol formation here from Warren. And Q Allen is still in as running back. Okay, so they reset the clock. Referee's still trying to get their stuff situated. Man in motion. Shotgun snap. Hands it off. Allen diving forward. Is he going to be able to get it? We'll see from the line judge near side. He had a really good view of it. And no, please do not have your hands on the player, other player. There's going to be extracurricular on the near side. That was committed by Daryl Lloyd on the near side. No flag for now. And the referees are going to talk about the actual position of the football, and they're going to call first down. Line judge on the near side said he had it. So that's what it's going to be. Q Allen with his first first down of this drive. So the drive stays alive for now. He stays in the game. Shotgun snap. Throwing here on first down. Evading towards the right side. There's a flag out possibly for a hold. Long pass towards Reese Robinson, and that's going to be off his helmet. Incomplete. Probably a holding penalty bringing this back. This is in the area of a hold. Yeah, you're going to see a hold there in the offensive line. That was Caleb Templeton, number 50 there on the offensive line. So a 10-yard penalty assessed from the 24-yard line will bring it back to the 14. First and 20 coming up. 5.59 on the clock. Darius Warren throwing here on first and 20. Lots of time to throw, and no, he's going to be hit from the back. And he's going to be sacked, and that will be the first sack of the game. And I believe it was Caleb Tyler who made the sack, and now it's going to be second and about a quarter of the field. With 524 ticking down on the clock. From the 10 yard line. Check that mark that 11. Delayed handoff. Q Allen trying to make a move and he does. He's able to get actually some yards out of this. So third down coming up and he's able to gain back four up to the 15. Line to gain will be the 30. We'll mark it four-yard line. He just makes a nice little move. So far-yard gain from Q Allen. That was kind of a little bit of a shuffled handoff. Reese in motion. Throws towards the near side and dropping the pass was Elijah Steele there on, I, I don't know if it was a screen design, but it looked like he was going to be tackled almost immediately. 426, here comes the punting unit of the Marauders. Four twenty-six on the clock, 25-24. Marauders lead the Vaqueros by the slimmest of margins. Out to return is going to be Caden Chan, standing around the 50-yard 50, 50 line, not really giving him as much respect. Fields it at the 50. Dodges out of the way of a tackle, working to his 40. Back to the 30. Back to the 20. He's going to have a lot of space. Is he going to get to the end zone? And he's going to be knocked out of bounds, and he is in the end zone. That is a touchdown return from Caden Chan. And just nobody was able to make it make a tackle here.
So 30 to 25 is the score line. And it looks like they're taking a second to think about this. They might go for two here. Marauders have been kind of doing their best to keep points off the board in the extra point game, so this could have some implications here. Offense coming out of the field looking for two. Three receivers out to the left, running back to the left of Johnson. Spread out wide is now Smith. Johnson in the empty set, put Smith in motion. Handoff, Smith towards the edge. Bounces off of a tackle. He's looking for the end zone, and he's going to get tackled in the end zone. Two-point conversion. So 32-25 to 25 is the score line. And the Marauders giving up their first touchdown on special teams all season. And it looked like nobody was really able to make a tackle there, and that was the end result. Four oh nine on the clock left here in the third quarter. Well, Santa Barbara with a little bit of energy back. Said giving up the touchdown and the multiple three and outs. Back to return for the Marauders. Is Reese Robinson and Iverson Daniels. This kick to the left side. Daniels to make the return from the 10. Cutting back inside. Is he going to be able to avoid a tackle? He does. He gets hit once. He's on the 20. He's back to the 25. Up to the 30. He's going to be wrapped up and brought down, and that was great to bring it back from the 10. What a way to change this field there. Very good job from Iverson Daniels doing his best to just kind of switch things, goes from far side to near side. Darius Warren back out onto the field for the Marauders. And we'll see Amir Bankhead check back into the field. He has the touchdown in this first half, or in the second half. And he'll take the first handoff of this drive. Hit at the line and brought down maybe as a yard. So second and nine coming up with 340 ticking down. Back and forth this game is gone. And this might come down to which team can make the most clutch defensive play. Fakes the handoff. Warren rolling out, throwing. And a great catch and run from Tajim Brown as he's got the first down. And they'll have it. With an 11 yard catch. For first down from the 44 yard line. 311 taking down now. Marauders looking to march down the field. Two receivers to his right, one to his left. Handles the snap, hands it off. Bankhead driving forward, and he's got a good chunk of five yards. Just shy of midfield. He's at the 49 of the Marauders.
sorting things out here. 12 seconds on the play clock. 2.21 left to go here in the third quarter. Out of the gun. Warren throwing all the way. Evades pressure and throws this wide, and it might be intercepted, and it'll be incomplete. And that was a massive miscue. Reese Robinson there on the near side. And that was picked up or well, caught out of bounds by Jamari Cannon. So almost disastrous. Third down and five. 213 on the clock. 25 to 32. Marauders need to convert here on third down. They're just in their own territory by the slimmest of margins. Midfield is 50. First down is the 46. Warren throwing with one hand. He finds Shamir Washington. Washington down the far side. And he's going to be hit up in the air as he tries to go up and over. And what an unbelievably well-timed throw from Darius Warren. First down Marauders deep into the Carroll territory. Get up and over. I mean, goodness gracious, Samir Washington going air mode. Handoff, Bankhead right into the middle, and he's going to maybe have a yard if he's not stonewalled at the line. One thirty-one left to go here in the third quarter. It doesn't really mean much. Game will continue in the fourth. Warren, man in his face, throws into the end zone, and oh, there's just overthrown. He was looking at a wide open Robert James who had just kind of gone on a post route. Just cut in after a run from the 28-yard line, third and 10 to go, and that was quickly a third and 10. Warren on third down, under pressure. He's going to be hit and sacked. On the Santa Barbara sideline getting pretty excited. And here comes the punting unit. Marauders not happy to have to punt after making a couple really big plays. That's a returner is Chan, who had the touchdown on his last return. Henderson, low punt. Maybe a little bit of a trick punt. Chan hit and brought down. He tried to bring it back. That was kind of ill-advised. I don't know what he was thinking. Got a couple guys right in his face. A short gain from Chan. They'll pin him back deep in their own territory. Santa Barbara will take over on their own 14, first and 10. Line to game will be the 24. Offset I formation for Johnson. Johnson hands it off to Smith. Smith hit at the line. He's going to be hit and brought down. Maybe has a yard or not. We'll see. Looks like he was hit right at the line. Second down coming up. That will be probably the final play of the third quarter. And that will be it. We're going to take a quick break. Third quarter over, 32-25. to 25. The Vaqueros retake the lead here in the third quarter, but it has been a wild one. We'll see you guys in just a few moments.
So Alex Johnson back out on the field. They'll be back in the offset eye. Two receivers out to the left, none to the right. Football is down, and we're starting the fourth quarter. 15 minutes on the clock, and we'll get things going and underway. Final 15 minutes of the game. Toss to Smith. Smith trying the far side, and he's not going to really get an edge. Maybe two yards, third and eight coming up. And this is a big third down here for the Marauder defense, who has spent a lot of time on the field already in this game. They have not scored a touchdown offensively yet today. Only touchdown this half coming by way of a return. The Marauders scored a touchdown early in the first in the second half from a touchdown from Bankhead. And there was two punts back to back. One was a return for a touchdown by Chan. Split back formation here. Johnson out of the gun, looking around, trying to check the defensive coverage. Marauders not giving him much yet. Linebackers step in, one back into coverage. They have a soft zone. Throwing far deep, throwing the outside, and there's going to be a flag, maybe for a hold, and that's called from the far judge down the line. We're going to watch this back on replay. Look for the release here. A little bit of contact, and that's going to get called a hold all day long. So it'll be a spot foul. So the pass interference assessed to the 26-yard line is now first and 10. So third down, not converted in the traditional way, offset eye formation. Three receivers out here, regular line. Shifts the offset eye. Hands off. Smith trying to go through the middle, and he's going to be stopped with a gain of one and a half, make it two. And, yeah, they'll have it down to the 28-yard line. Thirteen forty-five on the clock here. Johnson back beside him. Two receivers to his left, one to his right. Tight end in for coverage. Throws deep down the middle of the field. Does he have a receiver open? He does, but it's incomplete. B.J. Phillips was in the area, but that was well overthrown. Phillips is pretty daggum quick, but not quick enough. That football was thrown a mile. Third down and long coming up, another big third down situation. Can they convert? The Vaqueros have to go eight yards down to the 36-yard line. Johnson out of the gun, two receivers to his left, one to his right, tight end in. Hands it off. Smith dives into the line, and he's only going to get two yards. Two yards is not enough. It'll be fourth down and make it six. And here comes the punting unit as the third series or check, check that the third possession for the Vaqueros goes to punt. So three punts, one three and out, and two other drives that maybe had a first down, but the Marauders' defense doing their best to just figure out what's going on. 12-41 ticking down. The punt is away. Reese Robinson to return. Doesn't really get a chance to make a move, and he's down around the 32-yard line. You know, the Marauders will take over. Might the Marauders be able to find a good way to start or to have their final home game of the season?
Warren with Bankhead in motion. Hands it off. Running just a little bit to the right side is Jackson Marshall. So the Marauders have two more games after this, one at L.A. Pierce College. That one presumably going to be a pretty easy one to handle. No offense to the L.A. Pierce team. They're un unvictorized on the season. Nice little slant pass of Daryl Lloyd near side. That's enough to get just up to the line. It'll be third and one coming up here. And then one challenge at Moorpark College the following week. So this is our final home game coverage. And... What a way to have a, maybe a final home game here if the Marauders can try and sneak one out. A lot of football left to play with 11.28 left on the clock here. Third and one to go. The Marauders need to convert this. Because every time they do not get the football, or do not have the football, they are allowing precious time to tick off that clock. Run up the middle and a good run from the Marauders. And I believe... That was Jackson Marshall with the first down, and the Marauders able to move the football again towards the middle of the field. Clock ticking down under 11. Handoff. Zone run again, and that's going to be Marshall turning out another four yards into Vaquero territory, and the Vaqueros defense looking a little bit out of breath here as this is, again, probably the first major test of their defense this season. They've had a lot of work, but been able to do have most of their games turn out pretty positively for them. Nonetheless, down to the 46-yard line, yard line, third down and three coming up. Third and seven coming up, 10.24 on the clock. Another big third down here for Warren. Warren hands it off, diving forward, trying to push the pile anymore, and he's not going to get up to the line, I don't think. And I'm guessing that's going to be just shy, and they're going to mark him. They should mark him just shy. I don't think he actually made it. But I have the line judge on the near side calling it forward. First down and 10. The Marauders able to convert 26 seconds here on the play clock. Q. Allen was the ball carrier on the last play. Reese in motion. Fakes a handoff to Reese. Throws over the middle. Shamir Washington drops the football. Oh, man. And that's an incomplete pass. And he had the first down. That was a really good move inside, but unable to complete the pass. That's tough. Washington's had a couple really big catches in traffic. That would have been a huge one. Warren. With Reese in motion again, throws near side. And that's going to be Robert James with the reception. He's only able to get a couple yards out of it. Third down and will mark it. Six coming up. And Marauders able to convert two third downs already. This one will be the longest yardage of this drive. This is the fourth drive of the half, and they need to score here with precious time ticking off the clock. 9-10 ticking down. Twelve seconds on the play clock, time ticking down. They are going to have to snap this football relatively soon. Five seconds on the play clock. They are set and ready to go. Warren handles the snap, hands it off. Q. Allen trying to make a move. He's not going to have enough. He's all the way down to the 37-yard line, but the line to gain would have been the 33. 
So fourth down and four, the offense out on the field for now. And I only see an exchange of offensive personnel, no punting unit yet. The Marauders understanding the moment, 831 on the clock, and it's continuing to tick down. 20 seconds on the play clock, plenty of time to figure things out right now. Warren walking towards the line. He's ready to go. He has Q Allen beside him. Santa Barbara dialing up their fourth down defense. The Marauders with their fourth down offense. Four receivers out for him. Throwing here on fourth down. Under pressure immediately, and he throws to Reese, and Reese did not see the football. It's a turnover on downs. And it's not really a pass breakup, but I don't even think Reese saw the football. And Warren not able to convert, so the defense back out on the field, 8.08 on the clock, and a huge defensive time for the Marauders. They need to stop the football here. A score would almost be fatal at this point from the Vaqueros. They're going to go into the offset eye. Johnson has Smith directly behind him. And he has Norfleet in the offset. Hands off here on first down. Getting tackled and brought down. And a huge defensive play. Call it R.B. Wilson with a massive tackle for loss and a great play defensively. And that's how you start a defensive time for the Marauders. 7.54 on the clock ticking down. And that time is precious here for the Marauders. But a great way to start it second and long coming up. Football placed on the 31. Line to gain will be the 47. Personnel shifting around, going back to Tripp's offense to the left, one to the right. He's got Smith directly to his left. Five offensive linemen out, and here comes the snap. Johnson in the pocket, short little pass over the middle. They find a receiver, and he's able to make a move, and he's going to cut back inside, and they have the first down and maybe more. And a first down from Jackson Mahin, or Meehan. And that's exactly how you defeat heavy pressure from the defensive line. That was a little bit set up there. You could tell that they were reading the pressure from the defensive line. Four receivers out this time. Johnson throwing here on first down. He's got B.J. Phillips. Phillips down towards the near side, and he's going to have enough maybe for a first down again. They're going to call the chains forward and another first down here for the Vaqueros. Down to the 39-yard line, and they are moving quick this time. A change of pace. Maybe what the Marauders are not expecting right now. they got to find a way to stop this football from moving. They're just outside of field goal range. 6.30, and again, time being the most important thing here. Marauders running out of it. Johnson with Smith beside him. Two receivers to his right, one to his left, tied in on the left side of the line. Johnson out of the gun. Looks right. Checks right. Fakes a handoff, rolling far side, and he's going to choose to keep it, and he's going to be out of the pocket. He's going to be hit low as he became a runner and didn't decide to slide. And that's a gain up to the 34-yard line, so second and five coming up, 5.56 on the clock now. Split backs now for Johnson. The Vaqueros with the heavy offensive line. They've been running this well all day. Linebackers doing their best to read it, and this has all been a game of cat and mouse on who's willing to bite on the man coverage. Right now they're showing man. Handoff. Heavy offensive line, or heavy defensive line, and that's going to be a gain of maybe two yards, make it third and short coming up, but that was a really good read by the defensive line and the linebackers of the Marauders. You see him kind of collapse in there, and they just bit on the coverage. It was a matter of checking whether or not they would need to go into a zone read or not. Kept it man. And the Vaqueros have been steadfast in the run game so far. Third and three coming up, 444-58 on the clock. And they're going to run the split back formation again. Linebackers charged with a huge task here. 
faking the handoff, throwing short, and they're going to have an open running back, and that was set up really well. Smith into the end zone. Touchdown, Vaqueros. And potentially a nail in the coffin, the Vaqueros able to come in with a huge offensive possession there. And here comes the extra point attempt from the Vaqueros. Up and good. 38 to 25 the score line. The Morton Marauders need to score twice and convert two point conversions both times. And we're going to take a break. Score line right now, 25 to 39. Vaqueros lead it with 434 left on the clock here. You're watching SoCal College Sports. The Marauders will get the football back with four minutes and 34 seconds. they got to march down the field twice, pending an immaculate potential of a return from their return unit. This one picked up by Iverson Daniels. Daniels down the near side. He has a lot of room. And trying to make a huge tackle is the kicking unit. And I believe that was the kicker, number 62, coming in and flying in, trying to take – off Daniel's head. It was 62 Hunter Simmons who came flying in. Regardless, good return from Daniels. So the football will be placed on the 40-yard line, and there's going to be a holding penalty called. I didn't see the flag come out. And a personal foul. Check that. It wasn't a hold. It was a personal foul. 423, and they'll have to march the football 75 yards. Well, they got to do it in a quick manner. There's no time for five-minute offense here. It's two-minute drill all the way until the end of the game if they get a second chance at it. Throwing here on first down. Warren, under pressure, he's going to be hit from behind, stays on his feet, and he's able to dump it off to Bankhead. Bankhead able to get a gain out of it, and that's how you dump the football off before you get sacked. An extracurricular going on on the near side, and it looks... Well, never mind, not extracurricular. It looks like a S Santa Barbara player is down. And it was an a non-contact kind of injury after just watching it back right there. So the clock has stopped for now, 4.11 on the clock, and we're going to take a quick injury timeout ourselves. 25 to 39. Marauders trailing. We'll see you in a few moments.
4.11 on the clock. Warren able to dump it off, and Bankhead with a huge play there on first down makes it second and three. From the 32-yard line, line to gain is the 35. Looking to throw here on second down, trying to find trying to find an open receiver. And on the near side, I see the hat of the referee come off. Usually means a step out of bounds. And hard to say that that wouldn't have been pass interference because he was getting pushed out of bounds. That was Robert James. So the hat comes off from the far judge. No penalty marker out. Again, he was kind of pushed out of bounds, and the, the reason why the hat comes off is to mark an ineligible receiver down the field. So Warren, big third down play. Delayed handoff. Bankhead makes a move, cuts underneath, and he's able to get up to the 35, and he's going to be out of bounds. He has plenty for a first down, and the Marauders will continue their drive. 3.55 on the clock. Warren, losing time to throw, and that was thrown low and almost intercepted. Coming in on the coverage, trying to catch that football. It was number 15, Lamar Campbell. So second and 10 coming up here. 3.37 on the clock, and we were losing time. Warren drops the football, still has time to throw, able to get it off and making the catch, and under pressure, well under pressure, was Daryl Lloyd, and he was able to <laughs> catch the football. Another first down here on the 50-yard line exactly. So first and 10 from the 50 will make it to the 40-yard line in the Caro territory if they need to get the if they want to get the first down. A field goal and a touchdown does not tie this game. They need two touchdowns. Time running out, 3.27. Throwing on the run, caught. That's his first catch of the day, Elijah Steele. And Warren moving quickly. They have two timeouts. Santa Barbara has three themselves. You want to hold on to those as long as possible. Almost to under three minutes left here in the game. 20, uh, 25 to 39. Warren out of the gun. It's going to be all throws this way this time now. Third down, third down and three coming up. And the intended pass is from Amir Bankhead. But I can only imagine they're really going to run the ball when they see an opportunity or trying to set something up here. Plenty of time to catch their breath and make a call here. Warren out of the gun, and they're going to have a timeout. First timeout called by Santa Barbara. We're going to take one ourselves. We have three minutes exactly on the clock remaining to go. 25 to 39, Marauders trail. Timeout has been sorted. Both teams with a chance to talk it over. Vaquero's calling their first. They have two remaining as well. The Marauders need to drive down to the field twice now with three minutes remaining. Marauders on the Vaquero's 43-yard line. Line the game will be the 40. Third and three coming up. Trips receivers to his right, one to his left. Warren out of the gun. Has Bankhead beside him. Warren. Big third down, under pressure, evades pressure for now, running far side, he's going to have a lane maybe. He's going to choose to put his body on the line, and he's not going to be able to make it over the line. I don't think the football crossed. That was probably short, and the referee is going to be standing short, yes. So the football will be marked down at the 40-and-a-half yard line, and this is going to be an important fourth down they have to convert here. What is the play call from the Marauders? No questions at all. 2.43 ticking down. One yard to go. I say it was half. Warren 
Out of the gun, handles the snap, hands it off to Bankhead. Bankhead dives, finds it forward, and it is a first down, down to the 37-yard line. So first and 10 with 2.30 left on the clock, and they got to get this football punched in very soon. No field goals. It's all touchdowns from here on out. Getting lined up, clock moving. Warren throwing here on first down in the blitz. Bankhead gets tackled behind the uh, – after a gain of – Four yards. Check that three. It's going to be second and seven coming up. Clock continuing to move. He was tackled inbounds. They got to start thinking about throwing towards the corners now. Reese Robinson moving towards the near side slot. Warren out of the gun. Time to throw for now. Throwing deep into that zone. Oh, and straight through the hands of Daryl Lloyd, and that was an opportunity he's going to want back. 150 on the clock. And he was relatively open. This pass was thrown just right through his hands, and that was kind of broken up from Blake Volbrecht. 150 on the clock, third and seven. Realistically, there are two downs to get the first down at that point, but that was a huge opportunity at the end zone. Pass deflected and dropped. Almost intercepted. That was tipped at the line. And Will Smith, number 58, dropped the football. Fourth down, and this would be it. 147 on the clock, fourth and seven. Marauders down to their final down. A back-and-forth game. The scoreline does not tell the whole story. Football thrown to the ground, barring a flag. There might be another opportunity at this for the Marauders. Warren was on the run. Incomplete to Amir Bankhead. And the penalty is looking like it's going to be called against the Marauders as you see the Vaqueros celebrating on the sideline. And an incredibly poor amount of sportsmanship being showed from the sideline. From the Vaqueros, again, nothing new from Santa Barbara. Xavier Gutierrez was the one who was waving goodbye, I'm sure, as he was being ushered away by his coaching staff. That was a big conversation piece there. It was the same against baseball back in the day. You don't get known for a reputation for nothing. Now, two timeouts remaining for the Marauders. They're going to have to force Santa Barbara to kind of play out. And tackled with a gain of three was Norfleet. And a timeout is called by the Marauders. 1.35 on the clock. We'll take a break ourselves. Well, 135 on the clock, second and seven to go. Obviously, looking to try and make it a timing situation. Well, 
rushing attempt from Norfleet, and that's going to be it. The first down will probably mark it, and that's going to be the final offensive play of the game. Or at least serious offensive play of the game. Clock has stopped for now. The football waiting to be set down. And no timeout called here from Antelope Valley. So that's going to do it for our coverage for now. We'll keep things here until the final bit part of the game. Of course, want to extend a number of thank yous to Antelope Valley College, Byron Devers, Sports Information Director, and he's just one of the most important people around here making sure things run well and uh, – I just can't can't say enough good things about him. And uh, executive producer Mike Zepeda, owner and operator of SoCal College Sports. And uh, this is our final home game coverage of Antelope Valley College football. We've enjoyed having you guys along the ride with us this season. Obviously, Matt and Scott Tyndall are camera operators here on the ground here at Antelope Valley College bringing their very nice cameras and expertise and knowledge uh, with them. And, of course, our director of today's game, uh, Eric Chalette, been uh, working the visual side of things. And, obviously, I'm Emory Johnson. I've been happy to call most of the games this season for you guys. And, of course, Athletic Director Tom Gang here at Antelope Valley College. None of this would be at all possible without working with the athletic department as well as Tom Gang as the athletic director as we're in the final couple seconds of this football game. One more play to go, but that's going to be inconsequential. And just a tough back-and-forth game. Not a lot to say there. You guys obviously saw the whole story. Lots of crazy back-and-forth uh, with just a number of fumbles. The storyline for the Marauders is just not being able to complete plays and having a, a couple miscues resulting in turned over footballs. If the turnover differential is something that you pay attention to, that was one of the main reasons why the Marauders were not able to finish this one in the success rate. The Vaqueros will increase their record to 7-1. and one. Their conference record will be 3-0. and oh after their first major test of this season. Final score line, 25 to 39. As the clock is stopped, I'm not exactly sure what is going on. Everybody thought that this was the final play of the game, but m potentially the Marauders called a timeout. Yeah, somebody called a timeout. So the entire team kind of meeting on the sideline, potentially talking about how they want things to be cordially done here to finish things off. Timeout was, in fact, called by Santa Barbara City College. It's the coaching staff giving them some final directions on how the handshake is to, supposed to go down. Victory formation for Alex Johnson, and he takes the knees for the final play of the game. So Marauders will fall to 4-4 four and four on the season. Now two more games remaining. They got one against Pierce College next week and one at Moorpark College. Unfortunately, the coverage will not be available at Pierce College. Uh, however, that one will be a relatively simple game for the Marauders, all things considered. Um, and the real test will be against the Raiders in the final game of the season, and that could potentially affect a bowl game bid for the Marauders. Uh, Moore Park College will have their coverage on their own YouTube channel, so if you're looking to watch the final game of the season at Moore Park, uh, you'll have to look at the Moore, Tar Moore Park FTVM website, um, and you can find their broadcast coverage there for the final home game of the season. With that, everybody, final score, 39-25. I'm Emory Johnson, and uh, we wish everybody a good afternoon, everybody, from Marauders Stadium. We'll see you later.